the holidays. Um, as we're gearing up for the holidays, you're thinking, what can I make as gifts? What can I give to people? Because we're all crafty. And the Glow Forge is something that makes gift giving super easy and kind of unique. So what the Glow Forge is, it is a laser uh, cutter. They call it a printer. So it's like, so when you send something to your Glow Forge, you say, I'm going to print it. I always think of it as a laser cutter because it's actually cutting something out. Um, but your laser, uh, your Glowforge Aura is allows you to have a 12 by 12 workspace. Now, you may have seen something called a Glowforge Spark, which is a smaller version of the Glowforge. But the difference is, is with the Glowforge Aura, you have these little side doors that allow you to put in 12 inches by whatever length wood that you want to cut. And then you just slide it down as you cut things out. Um, so it really gives you a lot of a lot of space to work with. It is um, it's a it's a larger machine. The footprint of it is probably about two feet by 18 inches. So I have a nice big work desk that I can I can set it on. I also put it on a cart sometimes. And a lot of times I actually take it outside because this uses a ventilation system. And you can purchase the air filter that goes with it. It's also recommended, definitely if you're using it inside, you wanna have the air filter on. Um, I have mine vented out a window. So I just take the vent and I push it out the window. But a lot of times um, I'll take it outside and work with it outside. And then I don't have to have the exhaust hose on it. it it's just open to the outside. Um, so you use the Glowforge software to interface with your Aura. And what you do is you bring in an SVG either from the Glowforge catalog or your own design, or you can download um, off of, and, you know, Etsy has designs and things like that. So you can upload designs, much like any of the other design software, you can bring in your own designs. Um, the Glowforge Aura then uses the laser tip to cut out your design. And we're going to work on that a little bit. But I actually have the end of a design in my machine. So I haven't taken it out yet. Um, so I kind of wanted to show you when you take out your design, it has this camera here. This is where the camera is. And you can see the light on it. Um, and this is the printer head here. So this, this slides along the rails and the laser um, the laser just cuts your design. Now I have, this is a little bit, um, go this way with it. This piece of wood is a little bit longer than my machine. So I do have my side, my trap door open here and I'm just gonna pull out my board. Now I wanna make sure that I don't lose my pieces in the, in the removal process. So I'm going to do both ways. So there's part of the design there. And then we're just kind of keep pulling this design out, the board out. And look at our designs. There we go. All of our pieces have come out and they're not, everything's cut out how I'd like it to be. So this is a little ornament design and this is the end of it. And the reason I'm showing it at the end of this is it takes some time. So to cut out these, um, Four pieces here. It's a it's a snow globe ornament, and to cut out all of these different pieces, it takes about twenty five minutes. So we don't have time in the class to actually cut these out, but we can get everything set up and send it to the cutter, and then as it's cutting, we can talk about how to put it together. Now. This piece of wood is um, this is a little bit longer than your standard wood. Mostly you're going to use, uh, let's see, let me find a piece, wood that has the Glowforge approved wood. And the Glowforge approved wood has, has this great little QR code that the printer head recognizes and it knows exactly how to cut it. So any of the Glowforge material will have that QR code. So when you put it in the machine, it knows how to cut it. Um, I bought this this longer board from a company, a, a Rockler. I think they're national, but it was a 30 by 30 uh, sheet and I cut it down into two 12 by 12s. And then this um, 
little piece was left over. So that's what I was working with. And I love it because I can slide it right through my trap door um, and I don't have to cut it down. But these pieces are designed specifically to go right into the machine. This is the size you're working. Okay, and if you have questions along the way, please do ask them. Um, I know, you know, when you're working with a new machine, sometimes you don't, you know, you don't have anybody there to answer those questions for you. So I'm here today to answer those questions. Now I'm gonna grab, um, let's, let me grab my camera and I wanna show you guys how uh, this looks when it is, um, let's see, is that, is that the right, okay. Okay. So when you look at this machine, let's see if I can get it to go sideways for us. There we go. Okay. When you're looking at your um, at the inside of your machine here, you'll notice that inside. Sorry, guys. Oh, you're making everybody sick. I want to make sure I get the inside so you can see it because I want to show you how to clean it. So on the inside, you have this grid. Let me move over to this side and see if this works better. There we go. Okay, so we have this grid here and you'll notice these brown marks inside. You don't want to have your bed messy like that. So when, before I cut, I'm going to go ahead and clean this out. Now I have this like uh, lint-free cloth I use and I'm going to spritz it with some alcohol. And I normally would not do that in my machine. I would normally do that outside of my machine, but my hands are limited. And then you're going to just wipe off that gunk. This is basically the charring of your wood as the laser cuts it. And it's totally normal to have these little um, marks on your grate here. And you can just clean those right up with your alcohol and your lint-free cloth. And I use the lint-free cloth because I don't want any lint to get lit, to be left in the machine to cut it. Because these are your machines, your laser cutters are flammable. So um, I don't use this unsupervised. Like I never would turn this on and walk out of the room like I do with my um, Cricut or something like that, my silhouette machine. I can just turn that on and walk right out of the room and you don't even have to worry about it. So you want to get all that cleaned up. This grate does pick up. See how gunky that is? That's all from just that one cut. Now your grate will pick up and then you can um, vacuum underneath there and get all of that cleaned out. The other thing you might want to clean out every now and then is the printer head. So to clean out your printer head, we just, I just usually use, um, a little eye cloth, a little little alcohol, uh, what's it called, like a little, little packet of alcohol. But I can also use a clean alcohol squirted little thing. Now I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. But as you can see in there, there's a little lens inside there. And I don't clean that off, um, but I cleaned it around like the outside of it because you get a lot of, stuff uh, burning and like a little pieces fleck off, little teeny tiny pieces fleck off. And then the other thing, you wanna clean off your lens. So again, you can take your alcohol on your lint-free cloth and just clean off that lens right there, okay? You also need to keep your rails clean and you'll get a warning on your software that says clean your rails. So these are your rails and you just use your cloth and you wipe those down. And then we're just gonna slide this way and wipe that down. So we just, you just have to get up underneath and go on both sides and give it a, like a nice wipe. You wanna be careful that you don't dislodge the silver piece. That's um, how everything communicates. Now, and then so you can see like there was some gunk on my rails that black stuff, that's gunk on my rails. So when I cut something, if it doesn't line up with my cut, my cut lines don't line up, 
very likely my rails are messy and I just need to come in and give those a nice, nice fresh clean, give them a nice fresh start. So that's really all I do um, before I do a cut. I do, um, will take a Q-tip and alcohol and go in here and clean out my fan, which if you look really closely, let's see if I can get, if I can get close enough. I can. The fan has gunk in there that, so it definitely does need to be cleaned off. So I just, I'll do that like at a later date. And I just use alcohol and my um, Q-tips and I just clean that right out. And that keeps your fan functioning. And that's how you keep your, um, that's how you keep everything nice and clean for you as you're working. Okay, now I'll jump in and share my screen for, to show you how to um, set up your, in the software, how to get that set up. So what we need to do is we just need to go into the Glowforge. Um, oh, am I not sharing? Let me just- no, you need that. to share. Okay. Go back down, go back down. Okay. Here we are. Share screen and we'll go right here. So when you log into your Glowforge software, on the website, just the shop glowforge.com, you'll see all kinds of designs of elements that you can um, you can cut and load. You can pay for them as you go, or you can pay a subscription fee. Now you can also find designs, like I mentioned, on other sites, Etsy, um, other sources of SVG style designs. And when you go into your Glowforge, you just click on create. And then you can either choose an existing design that you have that you've worked on, or you can choose a new design. So let's just grab the Christmas photo ornament that I worked on that I have, I already cut out for us. And we'll bring that in. So what the machine does is it takes a picture of your bed and you can see that I have the grid on my bed. When I take a piece of material, where did my material go? If I take a piece of like the medium um, light maple plywood and I put that into my machine and then I let the machine, I'll just say, um, refresh the bed. Let me do that. There we go. So it's automatically done that. Now you can see I have my piece of wood in the machine and it's already scanned that QR code and changed my material to the light maple plywood. So I'm ready to go from here. Now, obviously I have cut pieces, so not everything's going to fit on my, um, on my screen as I cut it. Let me go like this. Let's go a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go bigger. Okay, so what we need to do is you can move items around and reposition them how you want them to be on your board. So if I wanna get that over there, I just need to place that right in that spot and it will cut that piece for me. If I don't wanna do all the pieces, I can just move those to the side and when they're on the side there, it won't cut those pieces. So I can just move those right over there and it will only cut the piece that is on my bed. Now that doesn't mean I can't then take, come back and say, oh, you know what? I think I can fit this one in here and maybe I can grab this guy and we'll rotate him and get him to fit in here. You can just rotate that right around, fit that right in there and then we'll grab this one. And I think that's gonna fit right there. Let me just kind of, we can rotate this a smidgy bit like this maybe, pop it down and you just, no piece gets left behind. And so we've got all those right there. Now I don't wanna cut all of these out because like I said, once I'm ready to cut it, I just go to the print and it will print this for me. But what if you're not using, um, what if you're not using your, um, material that is 
from Glowforge. What if you're using, like I used, your board of material like this? Then how do you determine how that's going to cut? It doesn't have a QR code. Well, I know that this board cuts like um, medium maple hardwood, and those cuttings give me great results, but that took time to figure that out. So I have a, mach a tool called a caliper, and this does millimeters or inches, and you simply zero it out, so it's like right there at the zero, and then I don't want millimeters, I wanna do my inches. I take my board and I open up my little caliper here, and on my board, it tells me how thick my wood is. So my wood is 0.16. So if I were cutting this piece of wood, when I go back into my software, instead of using um, the Glowforge material, I'm going to use uncertified material, and then I'm going to select the width of my own material. So it's 0.16. And then I submit that and it changes how things are cut. So I can also then choose my custom settings once I have my, um, once I have selected the width of my material, I can come in here and say, I'm going to cut this material and either choose settings I've done before for this material, or if I'm going to create a custom setting, then I would just need to create my custom setting. And you just do that by manual, and you can change your speed, your power, and the number of passes. So the speed is how quickly the laser will go over the surface it's cutting. So if it's not cutting through for you, you may want to lower the speed and that means the layers, the laser stays in that point a little bit longer than you were anticipating. Okay, so you can you can change that up as you go. So let me just show you, I'm gonna put in my, um, let me show you all how to put in, if you're using the side doors, I'm just gonna show you how to put in your wood for a side door piece. If we can go back over to the main camera, Okay, so I have my side door open and there's these little side doors on both sides of your machine. So I just have my side door here and I'm just gonna take my um, wood and I'm going to line it in there. Just push it right in that door and it goes right in. Now you may notice that um, sometimes your wood can be warped. It happens to the best of us. So one thing I like to do is use like super strong magnets to hold down the corners of my wood. I also will use tape to hold down my wood. Um, if your wood is warped or when your wood is warped, because it's going to happen, it won't cut all the way through because it's, it's warped in certain spots. So you can focus your camera on, on the wood, but if it's warped like that, that means the center of it or where it's warped is a little bit uh, thicker than where it's not warped. So you don't get an even cut with the laser. So using little um, little magnets, really strong magnets, works really well to hold this down. You can also make little uh, pins that go in the grid, the hex grids that will hold your wood down. But that is another reason why I like to use the doors because when I put my wood in and I bring it out this side, it really holds it down flat. The first time, a couple of times you may use this, you may have trouble with that until you kind of like figure it out on your own. And even now, like it still happens to me that I, um, that I, I won't, it won't cut all the way through. So it, it just, you know, I think a lot of times it's because my wood is warped or I didn't have it held in place. Um, so it happens even to the, even after you've done it for a while. So let's go back and I'll share my screen again. So with this wood, I'm really only gonna cut one of the pieces. So let's take that little guy there. I'm gonna move all the rest off my board and we'll get this one repositioned around like that. I kind of want it to go straight because, um, so it follows the grain of my wood. 
So we'll get it like that. Okay, so now that I've got that in there, I'm using an unknown material um, and I would choose my certified, my uncertified material, put in the width and everything. Um, but I do know that the um, medium maple hardwood cuts this out really well. So I'm just gonna choose that as my setting and then you go ahead and say print. Now what happens is the camera lens and the um, machine calibrates and it gets everything set up to make sure that you're ready to print. So I'm gonna stop share while this process is going through so you can kind of see it'll take, a, it, it could take two to three minutes to do that whole process of just going through and making sure it's ready. But it's basically just, um, it doesn't measure your material or anything like that. It just, I don't really know, actually, I don't know what it does. It just, I think it sends the material, the information over. Um, it is connected with Bluetooth. If you don't have a USB cord or anything like that, it's fully connected with Bluetooth. And let me just check and see if it's, okay, so it's verifying my agreement. Let me share my screen again so you guys can see as it moves. So it's it just says that it's verifying the alignment and it's still like processing through a bit. And then once it's ready, it's calibrating, it does a depth check. And then once it's ready, this light will say print. So I'm gonna go ahead and so stop sharing this. It's just, it, oops. Oh, I think I saw a message on there. It said preview adjusted. My measurement was adjusted for the um, material, which my it doesn't affect my design. Sometimes that can happen and it affects your design and you just have to cancel the print and start again, which is not, not the case on this one. So it's just calibrating and it's gonna come across and it'll tell me when it's ready. And once it's ready, my little light flashes there. Now I will have my machine outside and my computer inside and I can, it still communicates with itself. So um, I can start it inside and then go outside and make sure it's working. Um, now you don't want to open your machine once it starts printing. And you also do not want to um, shake your table or anything like that. You wanna have it on a nice sturdy table. When you use the Glowforge um, proof grade material, it automatically already has like a mask on it. And this helps protect your wood from getting burned. So I have a roll of masking tape um, that I got from Amazon. So when I'm using when I'm using material that's not proof grade material, I put the mask on it and that protects my material. If I'm using um, material that, if I'm creating something that has a lot of parts and pieces to it, I'll use this 3M tape on the back side so that it automatically has the adhesive on the back. So something that has like a lot of details um, where it's gonna be hard to get your glue into different spots, something like this, I would put the um, 3M masking adhesive on the back of this portion here so that I didn't have to worry about getting a little, my glue so, fine on this design. Okay, so this one has about six minutes left on it. And while that's cutting, get that back in, it's got this little guy has a little stand there. So it just stands down. Um, while this is cutting through, I can go ahead and we'll and take us to the overhead camera where we can talk about some of the different um, ways to do your designs. Now, when you are, working with your machine, you'll notice that it gives you three options. You can cut, which obviously we, we're cutting out, so it cuts something. You can score or you can engrave. So this did a cut all the way through on all of my pieces here. On this one, I made this ornament last year and I cut out my circle and cut out my center circle. This part here, I um, did an engraving on. And you can choose to have something that has a deep engraving on it or a light engraving on it and even a very light shadowy kind of engraving on this. So this actually, whole I was looking for a, um, 
gift card. This actually has a slot in there and you can, it'll hold a gift card. Um, obviously I decorated, I did this whole design in my Glowforge, but did you know that your Glowforge will cut um, non-flammable vinyl? So the Thank a Veteran, I used Caesar's um, pressure sensitive vinyl to put onto this little gift card holder. Um, that And you can cut that right out of the Glowforge. And you can kind of see the difference here. This engraving was a much deeper engraving. This was just a very light engraving. And they're different depths of wood. So I went for a little bit lighter on that one. So that those are some tips on your engraving. Now there's another um, thing that you can do and it's called score. So a score just basically will give you um, a line. So like this design here, this has a line on it and I scored the outside, but engraved the inside. Now you'll see that, <laughs> that around the letter, it has, oh, this always happens to me. Let me see if I can grab something here. Okay. So around this letter, you can see it's got um, some burn marks. Well, this still has the tape on it. So I haven't removed the tape yet. Those little burn marks are from the laser and it, it happens on pretty much all of them. Like even here, you can see like those little burn marks on that one. There's some little burn marks on this one. But once we, um, once we remove the masking tape, those burn marks go away. If the burn marks stay, you can just use like a Lysol wipe or alcohol and clean that right off. So what I like to do is I do usually keep my alcohol handy and my wipes handy because my hand on the edges of the ornament, you'll have the, like it burns right through. So the edge of the ornament will get your finger kind of dirty. And then as you're taking off your masking tape, your fingers get a little dirty. So again, we're just gonna grab our little um, cloth. These are scrap pieces and we'll put a little bit of alcohol on there. And then I, I can keep my fingers kind of clean as I take my masking off. So we just keep my fingers clean. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in here beforehand and just kind of try and clean it up a little bit. And you can see the gunk kind of comes off. That's the burn. But we're just going to go ahead and remove the masking on this one. So I just peel it off a little bit there. <clears throat> and we're just going to keep removing that on the side. <laughs> so this is a really cute... Um, either ornament or tag if you wanted to. Have a little a little gift tag here. You could do it on both sides. What I like to do if I'm doing an or a design that I'll do on one side and then flip it over onto the other side, I like to make a jig if I'm doing a lot of those. See how, so you don't see that burn anymore? That comes right off. So that's still on the masking, but it's not on my wood. I always have to go a little dainty so I don't get any of the burn on my on my uh, design itself. Be pulling that off. And there we go. Now I do have little pieces of masking on on the leaves so I can go back in and pull those out. but this is a great uh, a great time where if you wanted your leaves to be one color, you could put um, a stain on your design and then go back in and pull off the leaves and you would have a nice two-tone two colors. But just this one color, you know, having it simple really is just so pretty. Um, you could take a gold pen and go in there. Now, if I were doing that, I would have done that prior to taking off the backing, uh, the masking part of it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. This little ornament to my right here, 
I went ahead and painted all those pieces before doing the um, assemble. So all the little parts of that are all designed. Okay, so there's there's your ornament and I've taken off the masking and it's adorable. Now, what if you wanted to um, paint it? So like this little guy here, if I wanted to put, um, let's say a red hat on Santa's hat, I still have the masking on this. I could just remove the tape from the hat here and expose just the hat part right there. So that's just the hat exposed. And then I have um, a little paintbrush here and some red paint. Now this is just red acrylic paint. So I'm just gonna take that and I can brush that over the hat. Now it could go into the little lines there. I'm okay with that for this one. I'm just gonna go like that. And brush it right down. And I say I'm okay with that because I don't mind, the lines are really dark in color. So you don't really see that line coming out of it. Now I went into that portion of the design, but I'm not worried about that because that has masking on it. So it's not gonna come out. But if I wanted to um, get into like something that I've engraved, like this, the where it says Anderson, or if I'm gonna let, set that aside and let that dry for a minute. Let's say instead I wanted to have some ornaments pre-made if I were going to market or something like that. And I wanted to have some ornaments that were pre-made ready to go. I could have these all painted, ready to go. And then if I had my laser there, I could cut out a family name or I could have letters pre-cut and you could just um, attach the letters into this space. So you would just pre-cut a whole bunch of letters before do, going to a market. And then at the market, people can choose their name and put that on there. Let me get inside that little F there. I'm gonna take that out. All right, there we go. Now, I just am gonna take my paint and we'll paint in that, that space in the middle just with this. And my the, I'm just gonna kind of get that little dry brushing there, will still stand out. So I'm just gonna put that right up to the line and draw it across. Just like that. And then we'll do the same down here. Get right to that line and draw it across. There we go. So now I have that, it's already, that I could go to a market with these already painted, ready to go, and then just add the elements of the name afterwards. So let's see if we can um, do, like I have these, you can use these pens called Costco pens, <laughs> Costco pens, and um, these are really fun to use. They're paint pens. So there's a nice white one here. So as I come back to this guy, if I want to do the beard of Santa Claus, I would just come back in with my pen. Oops, let's take that beard off first. If you have a weeding tool, um, that's super helpful to have to remove these little pieces of masking tape. So you can always use those. If my hands are covering it up, I apologize. But you can just use those little pieces of masking tape and uh, with your weeding tool, and it's a little bit easier to pop those off, but they just, they really do peel right off. And then you can take your, um, your Posco pen and let's get that going.
So you shake it and then hold it down and the paint starts coming out. There we go. And then I can, if I need to be a little bit more careful with my painting, I can just do that with this. So let's get closer up so you guys can see how easy this is. Okay. Oops. So we're just going to paint that right in. You can follow the lines. If I go inside the lines a little bit, that's okay. It doesn't quite go into the groove there. How fun that is. I mean, this is such a cool, like, little... Um, Thing you could do, you could do name tags for seating arrangements and kids can color in their own um, little designs like that. And then if you want to, we want to do like up here. So if that red is dry, right? We'll take that little masking off. There we go. So see how that red did not come down into my design? Not cool. Then I can take my little pen, my paint pen, and just paint that right onto there. And then you just keep working your way around the design, taking off, removing the masking tape from different parts of it. Now, what about that one we cut? I bet you're curious how that one goes together. So you just keep working your way around and you can add, you know, as much paint as you want, as little as, as paint as you want, as you work your way around. All right. I haven't looked at my questions. Does anybody, does anybody have any questions along the way yet? Or I have the other window open. No questions yet. Okay, guys, do not hesitate to ask questions, though. That's that's what we're here for. We're happy to answer. All right, I'm going to set these aside for a moment. While those dry, we can kind of come back to those. And I have our um, frame here. Now, this design has a picture in it. So you can, the concept of it is that you can place a, um, place a picture between the layers here. Oops, let's get that going. So this one would come in here like this, and you can add a picture into the design and hold it in place. I thought this would go in the back of it. But maybe I'm, yeah. So then this goes into onto the back of it, like that. All right, so it'll kind of go together in all those pieces. So let's do, the first things first is we want to remove this. And if you want to paint it, this is where you would paint your design. And you see that brown, that burning stuff that just comes right off, just like that. And I might have to go back and look at that assembly because something's not looking right to me. as I'm doing it. And the other fun thing is you can also use acrylic. There's proof grade acrylic, and then you can um, find other types of acrylic that you can use. And you can create name tags like this and cut out a name um, and add a little keychain to it. So at the end of the holidays, they have a cute little keychain. If you're going to somebody's house, you can put their last name on it if you want to. Okay, so this is the front of my design and this is the back. The back usually has um, a bit more burn to it than your front does. So that's kind of how I always know my back and my front. Also, I did a horrible job putting on this masking tape. So I knew this was my back, my wrinkled masking tape. So you can see like those little burn marks there. Let's try and get those to clean up um, using the alcohol on the wipe. This you won't see um, on the design itself. You do wanna make sure you get all your masking tape off because if you put the adhesive on it with the masking tape, it will not, um, it won't come off. 
So, I mean, it won't stick. You know what I mean? Oh, the glue will stick to the masking, but not the actual wood. So this technically would be the front of my design, but since this design sort of is working backwards, I'm gonna use this as my bottom layer. So on the back of it, that's what you would see. And this part here where you've got those like little burn marks, we can just, again, take our little wipey cloth, little alcohol spray on there. Should clean my fingers beforehand. And then we're just gonna kind of clean that off and clean off those burn marks. Some of that may be just the wood, that stripe right there might be the wood going all the way through. But you just use your little alcohol and that will take off any of those um, little burn, burn marks you might see. So you get a little dirt there and that's okay. Okay, so then we've got this piece here. I think this is our back piece. Again, we just take off our masking. Um, other things you can cut in the Glow Forge, you can cut felt, you can cut the vinyl, you can cut wood, you can cut acrylic, you can cut um, leather, you can cut, um, you can engrave on leather patches, which is really fun. You can cut um, fabric, you can engrave on fabric. So like I've engraved on canvas boards before. Oh, a little tape off. There we go. Okay, so you do have to be careful when you have little pieces like this that you don't um, pull them too much. So you don't wanna have that, like, you know, you don't wanna break it. That's what I did with one of these little ornament things. It just broke off. Okay, so this is our very top piece that's going to go on like this. This is going to hold our um, picture in place. But I'm thinking like that. But then where does this piece go? I thought I had figured this out before we, um, before I did this one. So I think that little hole there is so you can get your finger in there and get your frame out. So let's do like that. Like you can get your picture in there, picture in and out like that. And then like that, I think that's how it goes. And it stacks up that deep. So on the back of it, it'll hold that picture in place. So you can just slide your picture right in the back of your design. So let's go ahead and adhere these together. Now to adhere together, you can use um, E6000 glue, you can use super glue. I like to use this ultra bond glue. Um, this stuff goes, sticks to everything. It's great for paper, it's good for jewelry. I use this on a lot of different things. I hope it's coming out for me. I had it, it was stuck earlier today. There we go. And then we just want to kind of slide that around. You don't want to get too much so it goops out the sides or anything like that. So just kind of give that a little slide. If you wanted to, you could paint this. You could um, paint it ahead of time and then put it all together. I may wait, I may wait and paint it afterwards. I don't know if I were like doing a whole bunch of these, I might wait and have it done afterwards. Okay, that's going to go like that. So you've got that nice and thick. You've got your dimension there. You can clip these together with um, a little clip or something, like your sewing clips that would hold that nicely together. While that's drying, we're going to go ahead and adhere our little round part right onto there. So just do a little bit of glue on the on this piece. That one go in there. 
think this will fit perfectly right on here. You just want to line up that edge. Now you can slide a picture in there if this is for your family before you gift it. If you are making these to sell, obviously then they would put their own picture in there after they've added it, after they purchase it. So we'll do another little line of adhesive on the top here. And I do like this tip because it does come out um, very controllable. That glues, you know, that just squirt out everywhere. And then we're just gonna put that to the back. We'll center that right on there. So see how that's on the back and the front? Now this is a great spot to put, you know, you could put the year that it was purchased. If you're selling this to somebody like Christmas 2024, or if you're gifting it to somebody, it'd be fun to put like a little memory. If you've gone traveled or done something with, as a family to put your little memory inside this. Um, for my kids, I realized that as they grew, as they got older, I realized um, they were gonna have to do their own tree someday. And um, so every year, at Christmas morning, I give them a new ornament that symbolizes maybe an event of the year, either a family event or a global event or something like that. And so by the time they're ready to set up their house, they'll have, you know, maybe 10 or so ornaments ready for their own tree that are full of family memories. So you could, you could have engraved the year on here um, beforehand or waited, you know, until afterwards. You don't need to paint the inside because you're going to slide a picture in there. Um, this is a great spot to write a little message to your family, like, I love you. It's been a wonderful year uh, or whatever you want to say in, in there. And then you can um, add some ribbon to the top or some bow, some beads. Let's grab our beads and bows. <laughs> so here we go here. Um, I love to use wooden beads like these because they just really are so easy to use. You can color them if you want to. You can paint them. If you want to use like a little bit of a bigger bobble, you can, if you have like bigger wooden beads, like this kind, let's see if I can get this out. That might be cute. I like these. Let's see if I can do. I got this container of beads. I don't, I don't know if I showed it to you guys. Um, I got this container of beads at a craft thrift store when I was visiting my son in Greenville, South Carolina. It was a whole store of um, craft supplies that people had obviously purchased and never used. So they uh, donated it and and it's like a goodwill for craft supplies. It's just, the, it was so fun to go in there and see it all um, and pick out what you needed. So for our ornament, we're just going to um, take our ribbon here, thread it through. Let's see, do we want to do, I can never decide if I want to do it first through the hole or put the beads on first. I think I'm going to do it like this. I'll just work it through that hole. And once you have a little knot, like a little bit through, we can make it into kind of a slip knot here. Put that on through there. Always then keep the loop to the back. So the loop's in the front. <laughs> That's how I always remember it. Like So you put the loop to the back, so the loop's in the front. If you're like me and you have to do it a hundred times before you get it right. And I'm kind of, I don't want to really pull super hard on here because I don't want to um, pull my little wooden piece off. My little hook there. I'm going to pull that off. If you love the wood look and maybe you don't want to paint it, you could um, add like a glaze to it to your finished design by using like Mod Podge or something like that on it, uh, just to give it like a glazed finish if you wanted to. I think I like that look better, but there we go. All right, I like the other side better on this one. 
Let's push that through. I'm just gonna squinch that up a bit, push it on through. And do keep in mind, my fingers are getting dirty because I keep touching the edge here. Um, but you just clean that edge off with a little, um, keep your handy, your alcohol clean and you can just clean that right off. Okay, here we go. And then if you want to, you can add some beads onto here for a little dimension and knot them at the end. A little rustic beads, aren't they? There we go. So I can just add my little bead right onto there. Oh, that would have looked cute. <laughs> I should have left it the way it was. Um, super cute though. Like you can just put it up like that and then either tie it in a knot and then it can go on the tree if you want, or you could again use it as a place setting. You could add the year here. We could paint it if you wanted to. Um, anything, anything like that you want to do. Let's just do a little bit more painting on these. And um, I'm trying to think of like other information from previous classes that people have asked about how to do something or um, where I got something, if that's helpful. The, the Posco pens are in um, Michael's in like the, they're in the craft section, like the fine art section. So where your, your fancy paint is and stuff like that, that's where you're gonna find your Posco pens. And they have a bunch of different color sets. I think you can get them individually as well. So you don't have to, um, if you just wanted to get a few colors as you worked on your projects, you could certainly do that. I just kind of, oh, there's a little hair over here. Got to take out the side piece. Um, the Glowforge, you do want to turn it off. It doesn't, it actually doesn't turn off. There's no off switch. So the only way to turn it off is to unplug it. It will naturally go to sleep. I like to leave mine unplugged. Um, no special reason why, but I, I don't leave a lot of appliances plugged in, but I guess because it, the laser can, you know, it's like, you're playing with fire. So I do like to um, unplug it when I'm done crafting. So I just go in and I'll just unplug that. I guess his gloves should be, should gloves be black? Does he have black gloves? Pull out the black pen. I don't know if I've used this one before. So maybe you'll get to see how we start a new pen. Okay. So this is um, a brand new pen. I haven't used it before. And all you have to do is um, give it a good shake. And then you just need a piece of uh, scrap paper that you can kind of put it onto and you hold it down and the paint will start to flow. You don't want to jump it up and down because that will put air pressure into there. So you just kind of like hold it and you'll start to see the paint flow down. So my tip is turning black as it goes. There we go. And then I can paint his little gloves here. I don't know if he has, I'm thinking black boots, not black gloves. It should probably be white. But what do you guys think? Anybody have, does anybody have an opinion? Let's see. So the drying time, good question, Patty. It varies, the drying time varies. Um, I find when you're working with such a small space, uh, it dries pretty quickly. So, and and the acrylic paints that I'm using, I'm just using like the American Americana or folk art paints there for like my hat. So that does dry pretty quickly. So, um, you know, like if you painted it at night and went to it the next morning, it's definitely gonna be dry. Or if you, I'm afraid that that is not the right color. 
um, if you, uh, you know, if you're like, like me, you're running out the door to go somewhere and you're thinking, oh, I need a gift. I'm going to throw a cute little tag on a bottle of wine for the hostess. And I want to have, you know, like make a little ornament for it. I could paint it in the car and probably by the time I got where I was going, it would be dry. Um, you don't need to put like a shellac on it if unless you wanted to for the shiny effect. But if you want to keep it like a matte finish, you don't need to put a shellac on it. You can just leave it, leave it as is. Oops, I think I've got two more fingers here. And you can use stain, you can use paint. Um, the veneers are really so pretty when you work with them. I do kind of like to leave the woods their natural color because they, they really are just really pretty. They have that wooden ornament style. And again, like the other ornament on the back of this, if you were making this for your family, um, you could always add, um, you could add a note, a message on the back of the, the ornament if you wanted to. And I do like the engraved lines because it is sort of like a paint by numbers. It really does let you, um, it, it keeps you nice and clean as you're working. So let's, um, let's go ahead and take off, remove the top of this one. So you can see my where my red, I over painted on the red. I'm just gonna peel back here and pull this out. And if I had like a gold rub, there's um in the wood aisle at Michael's, there's like a gold rub in a tube. That would be so pretty to rub into the stars around your little ornament. And there are so many different ornaments um, in the Glowforge software that you can choose from. You really have a lot of different ornaments and you can always make your own ornament. So um, you just start off with an ornament shape, add your uh, hanging part up here and you're, you're good to go. And then you can add any design you want onto that shape. So there we go, look at that. So you can, or some ornaments you can do and piece together. So you could have cut out all the little Santa pieces and then um, glued them onto the top, sort of like I did here or you can do the engraving, totally up to you. So here we are. Now I think down here on this, on this one, I'll do the bottom white and then we'll add the red on the top in the middle after that dries for a second. We'll add that one right in there. Okay. All these little pieces. <laughs> okay, so let's just take my white pen again and we'll add that right on the bottom. The um, Pasca pens I do think are, give you like a matte finish compared to the paint style pens. Of, uh, like this one I think has like a little glossier finish to it. So I think it really just depends on the look you want to go for. If you want something that's glossy or you want something that's a matte finish, you could kind of go either way. Okay, last part. We'll just pull this middle part off here. And again, if I wanted that gold, this would be the time to get in there with some gold coloring. I wanted to. So the um, Glowforge is super light. It is portable. Like I mentioned, you know, I take mine outside and I work with it outside. If I were doing a craft show or something, um, I would use probably take the filter and use the filter because it does uh, let off a smell. So I would use the filter for it. Um, but you can certainly take a generator and fire it up at a, at a craft market and do customization on the spot. 
on demand. Okay, so let's say if I wanted to make that red, I'm gonna grab my paint brush, my red paint, and then we're just gonna paint that little inside part red. Same as, same as the other one, that side first. Just gonna kind of brush my finger over there to make sure it's not in too deep in my holes in the engraving part there. So that just sets on the top and doesn't go into the engraving. If you water down your paint, it's a little you know easier to work with that way. But there we are. So you can still see all your design and everything is right in there. All right. Well, I think that's everything. I can go if you can go back to over to the main camera, you'll see that um my glow forge actually has turned off. So you can see that the light is gone. It's turned off. When I open it back up, it wakes up. And that piece we uh, cut out, I'm just gonna pull that right out here. And there we go. So this is a good example where it didn't quite cut all the way through. So what I would do is one of two things. So on the back of it, you can see it didn't quite cut all the way through. I would use um, my Dremel. I think it just, I think it got hung up somewhere along the way here for me. Um, but I would use my Dremel, if, if you have a Dremel or an X-Acto knife, and I just would go on the back where it didn't cut and, and just pop that through. Because it's just holding on at a few little spots there. And I would just be able to cut that right through and it would pop out for me. So like I said, that happens sometimes. I think it just drags. It had, you know, a little nerve and a little stage fright uh, tonight going on. But you can see how beautifully it does cut. Um, and when you're when you're really focusing on it and giving it all the right attention, making sure everything was lined up properly, it it looks beautiful. So I think that's it, Rich. If we if we've answered all of our questions, um, I think we're good to go. We got lots of good questions, and thank you guys for joining us tonight.